Siamo qui a Rimini nel Palazzo della Provincia a presentare questa mostra Prelude Interlude che io e Lorenzo Di Loreto insieme all'amico Frank Di Turi di New York presenteremo a San Leo il 25 settembre, sabato 25 settembre 2010 alle ore 17. Eh, avremo grandi ospiti, special guest in assoluto Naomi Rosenblum, la più eminente e storica della fotografia al mondo, Andri Martinov, direttore della Biennale d'Arte Contemporanea di Mosca e Mauro Manetti, direttore della Laba di Firenze. La mostra nasce da una collaborazione mia e di Frank in cui abbiamo inserito il mio lavoro e il suo lavoro creando una sinergia eh, ispirata al pensiero di Joseph Campbell e Carl Gustav Jung. In definitiva il, il progetto si basa su quello che viene definito il ritorno dell'eroe, The Hero Journey, che eh, mitologicamente, anche psicologicamente parlando, in definitiva è il viaggio dell'eroe che scende nell'Ade, negli inferi, nelle remote profondità dell'essere per poi ritornare al mondo rinnovato, quindi un messaggio di rinnovamento, di, di purificazione eh, che acquisisce ancora maggiore più importanza mh, essendo il progetto intero collegato ad uno scopo benefico, infatti eh, mh, il ricavato della vendita dei cataloghi il giorno dell'inaugurazione più una cena di gala che sarà effettuata al termine della mostra sarà interamente devoluto alla Fondazione Ricerca Fibrosicistica Onlus di Verona. Ecco, io penso di aver dato un messaggio abbastanza completo di quello che è la mostra. Passerei la parola al collega Frank Di Turi. Hi, my name is Frank Dittori. I'm a, a photo artist, and I've been exhibiting for over 40 years. In the last, say, five years, I've been very interested in trying to help raise funds through art for cystic fibrosis. At the moment, I represent the Christopher Ricardo Foundation in the United States. Um, I've been touring Russia, Japan, Italy, and many other countries trying to raise money. I really hope that uh, people come to the exhibition in St. Leo and buy books and make donations because it's really an important thing to try to help these children. Thank you. Sono Laura Capirossi, responsabile della delegazione fibrosicistica a Romagna. Eh, ringrazio i due fotografi, Frank Di Maio e Lorenzo Di Loreto, per aver scelto la fondazione come partner di questa iniziativa. Eh, tutto la, il ricavato di questa mostra fotografica sarà devoluto infatti alla fondazione eh, che opera per la ricerca sulla fibrosicistica attraverso il... La, e la sponsorizzazione di numerosi progetti di ricerca e, quindi eh, è possibile sostenere la fondazione sia con donazioni eh, sul conto corrente eh, postale della, della, della fondazione eh, sia attraverso l'acquisto appunto di questo catalogo nella mostra fotografica some background for the work of Frank Dutori and Lorenzo Di Loreto. And my remarks will suggest uh, how they came to do, how they fit into the history of photography. Because throughout the, the history of photography, which is uh, almost 200 years old, <laughs> Uh, it was uh, began in about 1839. Throughout its history, it had shown the forms and the objects in the, of the world in many different ways, some quite opposing ways. In the medium's earliest days, the image's lack of clarity was something thought to be incorrect, wrong. It was expected that the photograph would be extremely sharp and delineate the real world. This was thought to 
uh, the scientific advance that instead of uh, being uh, the painter's idea, it would be the actuality that would come out on a photographic plate. And much effort was expended at the very early days of photography to make it sharp. They uh, improved the cameras, they improved the lenses, they improved all the technology, the chemical technology, so that there would be very, very sharp images. There were people back in the 19th century, uh, you may know the name, some of you who are aware of photography's history, we may know the name of Julia Margaret Cameron, who was a woman who wanted the image to represent her feelings and was not interested in sharpness at all or in the actual, in showing actuality. But she was in the minority. Most photographers wished for the uh, image to be extremely sharp and realistic. Uh, but towards the end of the 19th century, ideas about <laughs> photographic aesthetics, the way a photograph should look, changed. And many photographers became convinced that having an image that was softer and less sharp was more a consonant with art and that photography could be art and, uh, instead of just a scientific rendition of reality. In other words, uh, it was not to be just utilitarian as it had been thought when it was first invented. And those who followed this idea that photographs could represent your inner feelings were called pictorialists. Uh, pictorialists were represented uh, mainly by a figure called um, Alfred Stieglitz, whom some of you may know about, who uh, presented this idea to the world, actually, but there were photographers in Italy, in France, uh, in Germany, all called pictorialists, art photographers. Today, we no longer believe in this kind of division, that there's art, there's, and art should be fuzzy, and that uh, a documentation should be art, and that, doc that documentation can't be art. So that today we know that photography covers an enormous range. Uh, we realize that uh, art involves feelings and it's less a question of technique. It's less a question of how you make the picture, but more of how you, what your feelings are and how you organize the picture. So that brings us to um, uh, what Frank and Lorenzo do, and that is they have chosen in a way to deal with indefinition rather than definition. Uh, many of these images suggest that they are drawn to a world that isn't completely knowable, that it's a world of the spirit uh, rather than the world of actuality. And most often they pre present not the entire uh, scientific view of things, for instance, of, you will see in the exhibition that there are, in Frank's work, portions of the human body, not the entire thing, someone seen in the shadows, or in Lorenzo's work, aspects of actuality that look magical, that you can't quite understand, that's because in but both of these are, artists are dealing with a kind of incompleteness that suggests their feelings rather than what is there for scientific discernment. Uh, their solid forms may seem amorphous and shadowy, but that's the way they represent what they feel about life. And in both uh, DiLoretto and the jury are drawn to the landscape 
And in particular, uh, I think Di Loretto's treatment of the earth, the sky, the firmament, and the water serves the purpose of mystifying the commonplace. After all, we have seen so many images in magazines, in books, in, well, in, on television, and every place of what the world looks like, uh, that what we need is an image of what people feel about the world. And in their, their work, strange lights might flicker through a stand of trees, or on the water, or down narrow passageways, or through ordinary fields. And what they're doing actually is what all artists do, which is transforming reality by concentrating on its mystical aspects. And as I say, that transformation is what underlies all art expression. Thank you.